Welcome to your crypto class. I'm Susie and I've got Joe on the line and Joe is the creator of the indicators that we're going to use today and I'm also known as Crypto Girl. So today we're going to look at the news, the overall market, top movers in the basket, the crypto screener review, indicators and do question and answer. So to start off, actually guys, one sec, I'm just going to make sure so I'm gonna make sure you can hear me. So sorry about this. Okay, you can't. Great, awesome. One second. I'm so sorry, guys. One sec. Okay, here we go. So to start off with the news, proceeds from World Housing to fund 3D printed homes for homeless families. So the H. This is an NFT, actually. Okay. H O M D A O D. Uh, DAO has announced that they will be dropping the World Housing 3D Home NFT collection on June 20th, 2022. The goal of the initiative is to raise $3 million USD, which will fund the development of 3D printed villages for homeless families around the world. The news followed Coinbase's announcement on June 2nd that it would be freezing its hiring plans and rescinding some of the offers it extended. The combination of NFTs to raise funds and using 3D printing to build homes for families in need is an ideal combination for new technologies working together to solve the issue of homelessness around the world, explains Donald McQuaid, Managing Director of World Housing. The use of 3D printing greatly accelerates um, the construction cycle for building homes, making it possible to build communities in months instead of years. This is key when developing housing for the world's poorest families who are living in unimaginable conditions without the safety of a home. We talk about crypto being a force for good in the world with the philanthropic NFT drops. There is now a way for the crypto community to act on that idea where NFTs have the potential to create real social impact and sustainable change, says McQuaid. That's pretty exciting. All right, so now we're going to go to the stock market. Bit Farms sells 3,000 Bitcoins to improve liquidity amid extreme volatility in crypto by Max on SeekingAlpha.com. Bit Farms, Nasdaq's BITF, has sold 3,000 Bitcoins, the USD purchased Bitcoins, for $62 million over the past week in an effort to improve liquidity and strengthen its balance sheets as the crypto market undergoes extreme volatility. It is also closed on its previously announced equipment financing of $37 million with NYDIG, improving corporate liquidity by a total of $100 million. In turn, the Bitcoin, Bitcoin being purchased with USD, Miner has taken a portion of those proceeds to rebalance its indebtedness by reducing its Bitcoin-backed credit facility with Galaxy Digital, OTC, PK, BRPHF, to 38 million from 66 million. As of June 20th, BitFarms, BITF, was holding a total of 3,349, which accounted to $67 million at purchase price of $20,000. In consideration of extreme volatility in the markets, we have continued to take action to enhance liquidity and to deleverage and strengthen our balance sheet. Specifically, we sold 1,500 more Bitcoin and are no longer holding, meaning holding for dear life, all of our daily Bitcoin production, said BitFarm CFO Jeff Lucas. We believe that selling a portion, aka, what do we say, guys? Taking profit of our Bitcoin holdings and daily production as a source of liquidity is the best and least expensive method in the current market env environment, he added. So I just want to add, I was really excited when I added this article for today because I think that it completely is aligning with what Joe and I continue to emphasize to you guys is take profit often. And I was so excited to see that we have a company, a NASDAQ traded company saying, hey, guys, guess what? We're taking profit often in their own words. So just keep that in your mind. You know, 
What would bit farms do? Take profit often. So, so should you. Okay, now this next article is really exciting because um, if you don't know what Deloitte is, I will quickly explain it to you. It's one of the top accounting firms in our country and it's powerful. So if you've been in the crypto land for a long time, you know that it has been long in coming to have corporations fully, fully accept crypto as a new currency. So just sit back, listen to this, and I think you'll have um, a better understanding of that, of that this is a long term, um, that, that this digital currency, this crypto land is long term. Deloitte NYDIG partner to help institutions adopt Bitcoin. Leading international consulting firm Deloitte is partnering with New York NYDIG to onboard businesses to Bitcoin, including Fortune 500 companies. Deloitte has partnered with Bitcoin Bank NYDIG to onboard businesses and further the adoption of Bitcoin. Deloitte advises businesses worldwide, including 90% of the Fortune 500 companies. The partnership seeks to improve upon reliability and accessibility for businesses around the world hoping to integrate Bitcoin products and services. Global consulting services company Deloitte, one of the big four accounting and consulting firms, has partnered with institutional Bitcoin service provider NYDIG to allow its clientele, including Fortune 500 companies, to integrate Bitcoin per a press release. The partnership will combine Deloitte's multidisciplinary business consultation services with the financial services specializing in Bitcoin adoption and an infrastructure offered by NYDIG. This alliance will offer new and existing clientele of Deloitte, which boast companies like Dell, Yamaha, Adobe, and others, easier access to the Bitcoin ecosystem. We envision a world where traditional financial infrastructure works alongside digital asset infrastructure to deliver clients a best in-class experience with the highest standards of regulatory compliance, said Juan Zhao, president of NYDIG. We've already started the journey of bringing Bitcoin to all by embedding Bitcoin wallets into existing user experiences, powering Bitcoin reward programs, and enabling Bitcoin secured lending. Guys, that is huge. So did you go back to that one line? It says, including 90% of the Fortune 500 companies. If I've ever wanted to be anywhere, it would be here right now reading this, knowing what is about to come. So it's just a matter of getting in and getting the right coins. So with that being said, let's look at the overall market. And it's amazing how these waves are waves, right? We always think that the wave is just crashing down and it's never going to go back up again. Well, look at this. So. I, for the first time on this slide, put the date in here because I thought it was pretty interesting and I'm going to kind of add this to my analysis is, is what day did it dip to the bottom, bottom, bottom place? Because that's my buy day, right? Um, not a doomsday. It's the buy date. It's the time where like when you're planting a plant and I went on a survival retreat this weekend and I learned how to plant and you dig two feet down and then you fill it with dirt. Well, to me, I feel like that's like the two feet down where you were going to get it and, and that's the root and then you want it to grow. So I'm always looking for the lowest, lowest point and super Saturday, it looks like this week. So I look forward to seeing it next week and the next week. So stick with Joe and I and we'll continue to look at what date did it hit the bottom and, and what time was that. So um, one thing I do want to say about Saturday is that you know, it's it's almost like the day of rest where people go out Friday nights and Saturday is just the markets and the stock markets are closed. And so traditionally, because people are so used to traders, professional traders are used to taking Saturday off. It's as if, you know, that continues to be. So um, just keep an eye on that. It'd be interesting to see if that's typically the day of the all time low, because that may be when Susie needs to wake up super early or stay on top of the market to get the lowest price possible. All right, so then you can see, guys, we went from 800 billion this last seven days all the way almost back up to 950 billion. But 
we went down from over 950 billion on June 16th down to 800 billion. So that's a great jump down. And then you have some a, a large moving upward. And we still are under 1 trillion. So therefore, anyone, you know, while we're still watching this, um, you know, we still need to, to take into consideration, um, you know, the market is the market. It's very volatile. So long term holders, beware. And, but if you're in it to win it and you want to jump in and you're okay and open to willing to and wanting to swing trade, then this would be an exciting space for you. Because what I'm about to show you, what's happening today, you know, some of these, one of these, one up 38%. So there's a lot of money on the table for a lot of people that are swing trading. So I invite you all to look at this slide now to kind of take into consideration, you know, what money I left on the table. You know, I'll just say me, you know, I was out in a survival trip this weekend so i wasn't marketing and look at soul look at i put a little pink star there soul went up 36 percent in the last one week so that's pretty exciting and dogecoin went up 27 percent um and so what i want you to zone in on if, if you're new here today this is cryptcoin 360.com it's for my visual learners it's phenomenal because you have three different shades of red and three different shades of green and what's happening here is the dark red is one of my favorite colors to look for because that means that the price went down three price points, three steps. So if I'm looking to purchase something and I'm going to look at the chart and do a deeper analysis prior to just jumping in and buying it, I'm not going to buy it against just this heat map. But XMR, that's really dark red. That means it's, it's on sale, right? So I'm going to look at that chart if I'm ready to get in. But if I've already purchased my coins and I have a plethora of them, let's just say I'm invested wide and I have 50 different coins and I want to say, ooh, quickly, what's good to sell right now? Sol is up 36%. So you would look at the dark green to see what's at a high right now. And, um, and, and I don't necessarily buy on the dark greens because that means that there's 38% gains that somebody has and they're going... If they're swing traders, they're going to take profit. So it is not one thing that I don't just jump in and buy a dark green one. Um, and, and these can be seen in multiple time frames. Right now, you're just looking at the one week performance analysis. But I like to look at one week because I'm not like I'm not an intraday trader where I'm getting in and out in one day. I'd like to do more long term trades. So one week is, is a good in between a month and a week. Sometimes I love to trade in one year, but with these volatility um, times, for me, I'm I'm more probably one day, one week. So let's just get back to this. So somebody is going to take profit and they're going to sell their soul and take 36%. And then they'll jump into, they'll probably take that soul profit, that 38% or 36% they just made. And then they'll be zoning in on like XMR, the one that's about to probably pop and, and hit the bottom and go back up again. So um, this is just a great example. Let's go to the next chart. And um, oh, forgot about this. If you guys do not have these indicators I'm about to show you and you want to check them out, there's you can go to crypto period. I'm sorry, mastery.cryptobrigade.com and you can check out all the indicators and what's available to you and you can subscribe. All right, so this is Bitcoin being purchased with USD and a one week performance chart with the radar. And the radar basically takes four charts and turns it into one on tradingview.com. And right here on the lower right, that's the radar. And the 240 stands for four hours. So on the four hour average, Bitcoin is going up. The one D is one day, the one W is one week, and the one M means one month. So for today, uh, Bitcoin is doing well. So it's up for the four hour, up for the one day, and up for the week. And you can see that candlestick is green. So we're at 21,501 at the time I took the slide this morning. So um, very exciting for Bitcoin. We'll see how long that lasts, right? And then this is a chart with the Crypto Mastery Indicator bundles. And it's again a Bitcoin USD. So we're using USD to buy Bitcoin. One week performance chart. So on the very top, you have the early reversal indicator. And each one of these bars represents one week. So the early reversal indicator saying that Bitcoin is going to go up again has not come in yet. 
and the trend is currently still in the downward trend. And the TSI, which is the trend strength indicator, that is still showing that Bitcoin is still going down. And the signal line is showing that Bitcoin is still going down. And the volatility index, the very bottom one, this is my favorite indicator. And guys, if, if I could just tell you anything to listen to me is this one moment. Volatility index, the number to the right of that red line, it says 5.41. That is an amazing, amazing number. That means like we're on the bottom of the ocean of the sea. Like it's like you found this treasure chest and you're just trying to get it open right now, but you gotta have like your mask on and you're down there and you you found the treasure chest and you know it's on the floor. And literally, if you if this was a live chart, I could shrink it up so we could look at the past times. It has not been in this volatility situation in a long time. That is why I am so excited about this volatility index. You know, personally, I really want to get it in a position where it's about to fly high up. And so I, I'm waiting for my other indicators on a one week basis to really, really like wholeheartedly jump back in. But I got to tell you, it is so I'm so wanting to because of that volatility. If anything, I personally, I feel like that volatility is saying, Susie, at least put something in back into Bitcoin. Um but we'll jump in live with Joe and we'll kind of see what Joe's perspective is on that. Um, but that is, to me, that's an indicator saying yes, yes, and yes. Uh, but the other ones are not saying that. The other ones are saying not yet, not yet. So personally, I'm holding back, but so close. So here is Ethereum purchase, being purchased by USD, a one-week performance chart utilizing the radar indicator. And just like Bitcoin, I call Ethereum the queen. The queen is following the king and for the four hour it's up for the one day it's up for the one week it's up and ethereum currently while i took this slide was at 1174 dollars so you can see the candlestick is red and um and it still has a long way to grow to get to that all-time high so we're again in an exciting position Let's check out the volatility index of Ethereum. So if you take your eyes very down to the bottom um, of volatility index indicator, guys, this is more exciting than Bitcoin. It's at 4.65 volatility. Huge, okay? But is it at the lowest volatility? I don't know because I'm looking at the other indicators and the signal line isn't tight yet. Like when that gold line and that red line gets tight and they're gonna cross, that's like, okay, you better get in now, Susie. If you don't, then it's going to be like, you're going to be wishing you'd had later, right? Um, and then this, the TSI, the trend strength indicator, the uh, third one from the bottom, that's still in the red. But look at where it's at on the bottom line. It is like almost flat. So this is so, it's so close to the floor if we haven't hit it. And then you have the trend line. It's still saying down. And then the Ethereum, um, the the ERI, the early reversal indicator, the very top indicator, you do we don't have an early reversal upcoming yet. So it's just like one of those things where I'm wondering, wow, is it going to happen today? Is it going to happen tomorrow? It's very exciting, but it, at this point in time, it's like it could wear you out just watching. <laughs> it's like the do nothing club, but you just watch, and watching is doing something. So. Um, it's one of those times where it's just like you got to stay on it and and watch because it's it's coming. Something is coming. There's, it, it doesn't rain every day, right? So it rains and then the sun comes and the wind blows and then you have all the cycles happen again. So something's coming. It's just too low on the volatility index for it not to blow upward. It's just that we need to be on point and like all hands on deck because when this blows upward, I don't know if there's going to be a, like a pausing place in this, but um, at this point, it, it's not happening at this moment. You know, this industry you, or this market, we, we don't know. It's always changing, but I do know that it is a very exciting time and we're close. We're on a floor. I just don't know how long that's going to be. So collectively in the Crypto Mastery Group, um, these coins have been selected for more of a long term uh uh, fundamental reason. So we have Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polygon, Cardano, Chainlink, Litecoin, 
Cosmos, Algorand, Harmony, Phantom, and Solana. And most of these can be found on Coinbase. So now we're gonna look at the hot movers in our basket. So beyond that list that I just showed you that have good fundamentals, this is technicals. And so on a technical basis, that watch list has exceedingly excelled just those little list of coins because all of our attendees here today, we collectively say, oh, I'm watching this, I'm watching that. And I'll add all of these coins onto our watch list. So at the time of doing the slides this morning, these were up. Phantom was up 14%, Doge up 13%, RNDR, R, yeah, RNDR USD was up 11%, Matic was up 11%, Arch, ACH was up 9%, um, actually that could be Anchor, Soul 9, 9%, LRC 9%, E-Gold, 9%, CRV, 9%, SAND, USDT, 8%, SAND, USD, up 8%, and Harmony, which is one, USDT, up 8.49%. And the list keeps going. So that is exciting. I can't wait to get into the charts with you guys. Um, just so you know, the watch list coins um, up for the moment are created in trading view and a watch list and you can organize your watch list by the percentage of the change the amount of change in price the last price symbol name you can also add subsections to your watch list to better organize what is ready to buy versus what is ripe and ready to sell and these coins are up for the day but i always look for the coins on the floor to be ready for my next low buy so we can get into the live charts and kind of look for that and you could tell us in the notes right now are you looking to sell right now or are you looking to buy and let us know how last week went if you actually jumped in and did buy anything or if you flipped any coins so we're going to look at the crypto screener review and this is not the screener today. This is just an example from last week of what you can do to get your coins to come into the crypto screener. So I actually had changed all of my ticker symbols in my watch list to pink so I could pull them over to the crypto screener. And you can click on moving average rating to get them to change from sell or buy and I'm going to go to the next slide and show you what else you can do. So also on the crypto screener, you can filter out your coins by exchange. And there's a drop down arrow there. And on this particular example, I had pressed Coinbase. So it only showed me the coins on TradingView that were able to be purchased on Coinbase. And then I just again want to reiterate that you can color code your watch list flags. So you can organize your crypto screener to just pull up your specific watch list. And you can change this to many time frames. And this one is set for one week. And I use this technology to find cute, like the clues as to what I want to zone in on. Um, the indicators come with trading view and are not what I use to decide to take a trade. You can also sort by moving average rating. You can sort by last price. You can sort by simple moving averages of 20 days, 50 days, and 200 days. And notice the little tiny arrow down. This helps you know if you want to sell or buy. The S means sell and the B means suggested buy. So again, we're going to review the mastery.cryptobrigade.com indicators now. If you'd like, you can subscribe to the URL above and you can find this link in the notes. So here are the indicators. We have volatility index, oversold conditions, one of my favorites. The one on the bottom I was just telling you about, ERI, early reversal indicator, the dynamic ATR, which you haven't seen yet, trend indicator, TSI, trend strength indicator is what that stands for, radar screener 1.0, and the signal line. So the radar 1.0, it's used to organize your watch list. It confirms trade progression. It shows four different chart times. It can be applied to multiple indicators. And the radar allows you to see four plus time frame trend directions on one chart. A very amazing. So you don't have to be that trader with five different computers going at the same time. You'll be extremely effective. You, I sometimes like to have three radars on my charts because I am just an analysis person. So here's the radar 1.0 in, in action. 
On the bottom, you can see there's four time frames on each radar. You can add as many radars as you want into your chart. Um, this one is set for 60 minutes, four hours, one day, and one week. And if you take your eyes and look on the upper left-hand corner, there's a little spoke. You can click on that spoke under the title of your indicator, and you can determine custom time frames. So this is what that looks like when you click on the spoke. And so sometimes if I just want to get in and out very like minutes by minutes or within an hour, I'll do a three minute, a five minute, a 10 minute and a 30 minute time frame. So uh, that's just an idea. You can do them longer term, one month averages if you'd like that too. And the trend indicator, it's used to set alerts. So step one is the key will pop up to indicate there's a great chance that an upward trend is coming. So stay alert and get ready. Step two, the bell indicator pops up. It confirms the trend direction. This means the upward direction is strong. You may want to take action. Step three is the numbers one through seven confirm trend direction with these numerical numbers. So one is the beginning of the first bar from which all buy conditions are met. The number two to seven is the total number count of present cycle. If buy condition criteria are still met, the number count will then restart from the bell. So here's the trend indicator and in action. You have the key comes in. That means there's a key opportunity coming, stay alert. And then the bell comes in saying, all right, time to buy. This is where it's strong. You have a confirmation. The direction is maintaining that position. And then you have a one through seven that confirms the trend direction. It doesn't always come in on the next candlestick or bar because there's resistance in the force. It happens, and you can see on the second situation on the right hand side, the key, the bell, the one came in, and then it was if this is a one week chart, so it was like one, two, three, four, like three weeks until the two came in. But you can see the trend direction line remained green on this one. So Nothing is perfect in the in in trading land ever. So that's why the technology is good to kind of help guide you to understand is it do I stay or do I sell? And so collectively using all the indicators together will help you understand what to do during that pause place. When the when the trend indicator is not confirming numerically, it means there's some resistance in the force of the upward movement. And, and that happens. So that's why you want to have more than one indicator to rely on. So the other ones are the volatility index. It shows overbought or oversold conditions. It's used with shorter time frames. Third one is the signal line. It shows the trend direction confirmation when the green linear average crosses the red. That's the green line, red line with the gold line in between. The TSI is the trend strength indicator. This one is huge. It shows early trend reversal when green plots start, and it shows early exit reversal when the red plots start. Then you have the fifth one, ERI. I call it the Houdini. It's like a magic one. It's a re early reversal indicator. So the green arrow up means the conditions for a soon upward trend are present, and the red arrow down means the conditions for a soon downward trend are present. So here's an example of that. So this is not the, the chart today. This is just for examples for the indicators. So on the upper right hand corner, you see early reversal. The red early reversal arrow came down and then the market followed suit. It continued to go down. So the second section is trend. So you had the key come up, the bell come up, came up, but then the resistance happened. And you could see that the one, the two and the three did not follow. So that is why you really want to have all of the other indicators because if you saw the early reversal come in that is a warning okay houston we have a problem there's some resistance in the force of the upward force it's going down and then the second indicator is the tsi trend strength indicator that one same thing happened you had in right if we look right under where that bell was on the trend you had the green arrow going up and you're thinking yeah it's going to continue to go up but then you had the earlier reversal come in and then you can see how the green line and the gold line got closer and then bam, they switched directions and then the red arrow down came in and followed suit. So 
and so when those trend strength lines get close, you know that there's potentially a switch that's going to come in direction. And then the signal line in this one, it was tight. When I say tight, you can see how the whole time the bell and the key and the bell came up, but the signal line was tight. There was no gap. You couldn't see any white between like the green line and the white line. So that is a sign that we're going sideways, that this could go either direction. And then you have the volatility index. It was in what we call let the cake bake zone, which is when the line is black. It's not an oversold or overbought zone. And it also started, it looked like a little pivot upward and then boom, started going down. So collectively, all the indicators work simultaneously together so that you have an advantage over other people that don't have the proprietary indicators helping you know what direction it's going to go because that's the thing you're just trying to be like one step ahead of everybody else one trade in front of everybody else because you guys know in a uh, new york second things change so this is not my favorite indicator i was telling you guys about the volatility index so the volatility index measures index indicator measures how far the coin stretches away from its mean price so look to the left hand side you see the green lines and the line turned green i take profits when it's in that area that's like saying hello we have a ceiling it's in the ceiling zone and then take notes of the numbers and descriptions on the right hand side so overbought it shows 80 up to 100 and that's really significant when you're setting alerts because you could set an alert if you go ahead and buy when it's in the red zone and you look down it says i buy here in the red zone say you bought it in a volatility zone of 20 to zero you could set an alert for you to get an email from trading view saying tell me when this gets to the 80 to 100 zone that's another alert you can get so if you're going about your day you get an email that says okay uh, ethereum is in the 80 to 100 zone take profit while you've got it um, then notice that the line, the thick red line is a 20 and the thin red line is a zero. So we earlier, we saw the slide of Bitcoin. We saw the slide of Ethereum. Bitcoin is around a five volatility. Ethereum is around a four. So exciting. We are in a very, very, very point where I would say Ethereum and Bitcoin are flooring. That, that is a oversold, oversold paradise so it's not going to stay there long i guarantee you it's not going to be long so it's there and that's the thing that's one of those points it's like nerve-wracking because you've got to know well when 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 do i buy because it, it once it gets over to 20 then it's like oh no like i i lost all that profit i could have gotten from four to zero four to four to 100. so again you can go to mastery.cryptobrigade.com if you don't have the indicators yet all right, so now it's the fun part. We're going to go and look at my chart. Joe's going to come live with us and we can see what's actively going on. And we invite all of you to ask questions. I'm so excited to have you all here. And this is all about you. So I'm going to hit the questions box. And Joe, you want to say hello to everybody? All right, let's see. Hello. Hi, Susie. Hi, Joe. How's it going? <laughs> Good. All right. You know, um, the markets are really looks like uh, showing some signs of a potential bottom. Um, there's a couple coins I wanted to take a look at. Um, in particular, ones that I'm holding. Like if you can go to the Cardano, right? So guys, if you're new, Cardano is ADA. So the the symbol for that does nothing to do with like the name of it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and uh, yeah, like if we can minimize or, or just hide a couple of the uh, radars. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and the radar is free. I love radars. Um, <laughs> you know, there you go. Well, we need the um the one radar. Okay. The default one. All right. So to do that, guys, you can go to your favorite. I had favorited it, so 
and then you can go to your radar and you could click here and say you want to move to the existing pane below and that way there you go is this the default 60 to 41 day uh, oh, yes. and, and these are the uh, the time frames uh, that come uh, when you get the uh, radar and you renew your package uh, this these time frames and then you can add additional radars and you can also change the time frames but um, there's just a couple of things in particular uh, that I wanted to point out right and if you could um, let's say we uh, uh, hide the uh, ATR okay just now, um, there you yeah so, all right now this is a, a weekly chart, and the weekly chart, um, you know, this plots a bar every every Sunday, I believe. So um, when you take a look at this, you'll notice in the radar, and if you make the, the chart a little bit closer, Susie. Like, like bigger or smaller? Uh, tighter. Yeah, that way. Okay, just like that. I just wanted to point out that the radar on the daily and the weekly are starting to turn up. And this is something in particular that we look for to be the potential clues that the market could be turning, you know, because we want the overall trend in our favor. Now, if you change this chart to a daily, right? Um, a couple of things in particular. First, uh, the volatility index is at the 20, and it looks like it's just about to come up, and that can be used to, um, you know, uh, uh, apply different positioning. It's called scale in. So if you do, uh, let's say, 25 on the vol index, and you could do uh, 25 on the TSI, and uh, Right now, we're rooting for the cross on the signal line. And uh, I have my alert set for that. And that's something in particular that I'm looking for. And uh, on the trend indicator, um, this one here is usually one of our final uh, chart overlays to turn on. And uh, so we're looking for that uh, moving average, which is red right now. We're looking for that to turn green. And we're looking for the green uh, bars. So you can still set your alerts for the signal line, and you can set your alert for the uh, trend indicator. So let's do that and really quick. I'll, I'll do that so they can see. Add an alert. So, um, Joe, you like to, to say crossing up, or do you want to just keep it at crossing? Crossing sign. Okay, so what that means, guys, as soon as this happens right here, it goes from one color to the other color, from red to green or green to red, it's going to tell you. So I'm going to just say, um, I'm going to do my puzzle piece. And I'm going to say ADA is crossing up. Well, I'm going to say crossing. Um, and this is a one day chart. And I'm typing this, but I'm gonna copy it and I'm also gonna put it in the message because I'm writing it in a way that on a message that I'm gonna understand. Because whatever's in the message box, when that email comes to you, that's what it's gonna say. And um, for some reason, I am, I, I, you know what, hold on, I may have like, yeah, I have to shrink my, my computer screen down a little bit so I can create this. I'm gonna click create, and then now that's gonna email me when this crosses. And then I'm gonna do my next one, I'm gonna do the add alert for the signal line. So trend strength indicator crossing. So Joe, that's the same thing as the signal line. When the, the red line turns into green, that's what's considered crossing, is that right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So that's what the cross, I know everyone's probably like, what does crossing mean? Oh, look, Cardano's already crossing. So it's just happening, Joe. So it just came up. So it's time. You see that, Joe? 
Yeah. Yeah, it's uh well the markets are moving fast right now. So th- th- that may trigger so it's well yeah, as we're talking it's possible. That's possible. It's happening. Good eye. Good eye there, Joe. Good eye there, mate. <laughs> ADA. So Joe's driving this ship. So um I think I'm gonna TSI crossing crossing one day chart. Okay. So what else? Oh, and you know what I didn't wait, I wanna copy this. And I want to put it in my notes, so that's the message I'm going to get. So I'm going to know what that means. Continue. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put a trade in. I'm going to say, okay, buy market, and then I'm going to say, um, I kind of go silly crazy because this is fake money, okay? It's just like my paper trading account. So now I just let it sit in season. Okay, we made a dollar, we made two dollars, right? So we'll see how long this goes, but this number is going to fluctuate because the market's always moving. But that's a good way for you to test out the indicators before you put your real money into this and you can test out your ability to strategize appropriately and you could just test yourself put 25 percent in like joe said here 25 percent in here 25 percent in here and here so then if you follow each indicator at 25 percent that's 100 percent of what you're willing and able and your risk tolerance allows you to responsibly invest. And we're not financial advisors, so none of this is financial advice. We're just trying to teach you the technology that you guys have access to. Okay, so. so yeah, so, you know, um, I just wanted to also put out, uh, point out, <laughs> is that uh, if you look at the radar, the 60 minute time frame is still red, right? And uh, the uh, 240, now 240, that represents a four hour chart um, that's uh, 60 times four. So these are the different time frames that we use. You can also uh, change those time frames. Uh, this is what I use because when I'm qualifying trades, I'm looking for uh, a trend to be put in place. And one of the things that shows me that is that if I have the daily and the weekly both green, you know, the, the other time frames are going to fluctuate, but I'm mainly interested in the daily and the weekly. Um, so um, this is something in here that, that's going to be um, interesting on how everything develops. Now, Susie, if you just change that back to the uh, daily a second. There you go, right? And I just want to say, so let's just look at uh, what we have right now and also what we're looking for in the summary before we go to another coin. So on this example here, um, which I'm in this market right now, and I, I wasn't smart enough to get out of it when everything came down. And, and Susie, if you can make the chart a little bit more smaller, right? Because I've been stuck in this thing since May. So if we just look at percentages, what percentage, right. yeah, well, what percentage has had do we move down right in May? Like, see that double top right there? Yeah, let's see. Like, wow, well, wow. all right. So here's May. So let's say, like, from the top, if you bought the worst time in May possible. Yeah, I mean, this is something that I wasn't expecting, and I was holding this, and and I showed you this, to let you know, like, you're not gonna win all your trades, and even me, with all the years that I have and experience, I still lose trades. Yeah, you know, I'm not, um, I, I'm not, I don't go uh, uh, 10 out of 10 trades just because I've been in the business for over 25 years. Um, but certain times the market um, has these different moves um, and the volatility, and the market sometimes gets the best of them, and I'm one of the best. And uh, in this example in here, I'm actually in May, I never got out, and uh, it looks like it, it dropped another 4% from where it was. You know, what's interesting in here is, is is that if we look in here to where we're right now, now we have the best chance of maybe seeing this possible recovery. If you look here in May City, right, on the 29th, you can see how on the trend indicator we do go green. And I'm pointing at the trend indicator because this is usually the last a chart overlay that gets that final confirmation of the trend direction. And when you look at that new market count, um, 
you know, to be able to tell like how far a motivator can move or how fast because it's mathematical thing. But what we do know is, is is that right now we're coming to uh, a test of this uh, coming up, and we have the uh, volatility index all the way oversold, which is down to 20, just like what it was about a week ago. So these are clues, and that's all I'm just kind of wanting to point out. I the same thing like the TSI down at the oversold zone. So um, uh, utilizing these tools is to know the clues of, of what it starts to look like or what you need to have it to win. So, Jeff, can I just reiterate what you're saying really quick? Your audio is getting gargled. Terry just put a note in there. So I'll just um, reiterate a little bit what he was saying is that he wanted you guys to look at the trend indicator as to where it started. And um, say that again, Joe, just say it one more time and then I'll, I'll say exactly what you were saying. Uh, well, just basically is that we're waiting for the trend indicator to turn on right now and looking for the new okay. numeric. Okay, let me just repeat that. So he's saying, guys, with the trend indicator, we're just waiting where the eyeball is, is we're waiting for the trend indicator to turn on on the one day chart. If you are wanting to get in and, and stick with the trading on the one day, and then we're waiting for the signal line to cross and move into the green zone and one of the things that is occurring already is the trend strength indicator which if you were listening earlier the trend strength indicator indicates what is coming it's another houdini i would say like this one which says it's going to be moving up soon meaning when i say this one i mean the early reversal indicator so this one has already basically gone off meaning the trend strength indicator on a one day and now a one day chart is already hit so if you're interested in cardano this is the time to get in on the one day chart which was the 20th today is the 21st so yesterday and then the volatility index still in the red zone that is the oversold zone so there's so much room until you get back to the ceiling for growth so in a sense it's almost as if the volatility has already, you know, is where it is and where it should be to get in on that. So if somebody's interested in getting Cardano, then it would be, uh, there is a, a good chance that this could continue to grow upward. All right, go ahead, Joe, tell us more and I'll reiterate that. Sure, uh, that was uh, uh, well said, you know. Um, well, let's just uh, go to another coin. Okay. And. Uh, the um Salim Solana Solana Sol okay yeah. so Solana is S O L and we're gonna go to Salon Solana being purchased with USD on Coinbase wow yeah this is the yeah. one remember the heat map guys it was up thirty something percent from last week you know and, and I just wanted to point out that the uh, volatility index is still oversold. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so it's still showing a potential opportunity. And uh, the uh, number count is the number one today. So yesterday we would have had our bell alert on the trend indicator. And today is the first new number one. So I, yeah. I thought this is something, yeah, something in particular to look at because what we need for is for the numbers to, to start to trend higher. So um, this is going to be one to watch between now and the end of the week. So the one thing, Joe, on a one-week basis, this went up a lot. So here we go. It's, this is showing the last six days. It went up 29%. Notice in the last hour it's going down because some people are taking profit with their 29% increase. Um, I'm going to just delete this so we can see where this is at. So on the... Keltner band, guys, this is usually the high point where it will go to. So therefore, if if you're getting it around here and it goes to that, gosh, can't really get to that bar to here, that's 11 potential percent to get to the highest of the Keltner bands. 
And let's see, like, when's the last time it went higher than that was here. So if it, let's see how far it is down from when that highest point it was. It's 73% off from the all time high from 80 days ago. So a lot of people are probably very upset. Is this Joe? Is this where you're at? <laughs> you lost 73% and I'm not meaning to, oh, that's right, Joe, you didn't have Solana, but, um, but the people that were holding Solana, they're down 73%. So this, they're wanting this to go up. So somebody that was currently holding Solana, they may be down cost averaging now saying, all right, I'm going to scoop some up so that my losses are mitigated by purchasing more so that the average cost purchase price of their entire asset um, holdings is not as much as it was when they bought at the all at the recent 80 day all time high. So th there could be a lot of advantage um, for them yeah. to get in at this lower price. But the idea isn't. But you Go know, ahead. Susie, I just want to just point out just um, a couple of things with the clues, right? So if you go back to the um, the other chart overlays. Wow. Sure. Because mm -hmm. you know, the idea is, is is to utilize all of them, right? But um, if we were just to look at this in the summary, just to close, it is that that. Uh, we need the, uh, if you look back in here in the beginning of June, you see on the Hold on, I'm going to reiterate really quick, Joe, because it, it's garbling again. So he's saying, look back here at June, and he said the ideal thing is to look at all the indicators and look at all of them collectively. Okay, go ahead, Joe. I just wanted to just point out that uh, the last number count uh, failed in June. So what we want to do is, is look for this new one to uh, progress higher. Okay, so he's saying, guys, that the last number count in June failed, meaning that it, like the key came in the bell, and and you're talking about the trend, right? Yeah. Yes. So there was so much resistance with Solana, and this is a one day. So between, let's just see what date it was from. This time until there. When you say it failed, Joe, well, I mean, yeah, there were days where the resistance of moving up was so strong. Why do you feel like it failed? Because they still came in. It's just not like every day it came in. Yeah, well, when I say it failed, you can see how the numbers stopped. Um, stopped the uh, uh, printing higher not higher values okay we go to one two three four and then the numbers stop completely and uh now this is considered a new a new number count that's all i'm trying to say this is a new cycle that it'd be interesting to see if on this cycle we see it start to trade higher well i have an observation to to say to everybody is notice guys the underlining line color was red throughout all of this but right now we have a green so what would be the significance of the red line versus the green line and the trend indicator well i think the market sometimes when the market gets really fast sometimes uh, these all these programs and algorithms they just don't work. They fall out of sync. Now, if you look at that time, what happened, if you look at the signal line, the signal line was actually going up. Right. So you can get different divergences when the market gets fast. But, but when the trend actually turns green, now this is a different type of condition. So you know that's why, in particular, this is of interest because we're finally getting the trend to turn green, um, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, I think what Joe's starting to say also, guys, is that collectively looking at all the indicators together is so essential because the signal line was moving up, but however, look at the TSI. It stayed down in the oversold zone. So this right here would be the overbought zone. So 
when you're learning how to utilize all these and the volatility index stayed in the oversold zone too, then collectively taking all that data is going to give you, I would say, correct expectations of your investment. Because right here, you this is what's called the Keltner bands. And these are average points that this particular asset would most likely hit. So the first line, the first price in this part right here I'm looking at would be this first line. And then the price that comes with this second line and then this line. Those are accurate, most um, most likely price points that this particular asset would hit utilizing past performance moving costs of the coin. And so you don't want to have great expectations of this going up when it's above this band. And this is exciting. Look how low it was. And I made this line right here, guys, because I wanted to show you at the lowest point in the past few um, days and the last was right here, which was May 12th. And that and I and I just did this. Um, you come over on your chart here. It's called the horizontal ray. And I wanted it to go to the right. And look at that. Getting in right now is equivalent to getting in right here on May 12, 22nd. May 12, 2022. But it's hard for my eyes to see that. And that's why I suggest that you guys use some of these tools on the toolbar to get a good, good eagle eye view. Now, ideally, it would be great to get in right here because it would have been the lowest, lowest point. And look what signal you could have looked at to see that it's when you were flooring on that floor. So when we say, well, I don't know if we've hit the floor, well, look at the volatility index. I and mean, you're gonna know, have you hit the ocean floor on this wave? And, and that, you know, how when the wave breaks and it comes to the beach and it's on its way back down, that's like flooring in my perspective, right? The wave broke, now it's going back out to get up again. And now the surfers are getting their surfboards. They're about to get on and uh, they're watching the wave when it's down here. But now it's moving. So let's just say we had scooped it up right here when the volatility index says, hey, we're flooring. And then we were riding it to here. We'd be up 37 percent. So when I say like the volatility index is my favorite indicator, it's one of the reasons why, even though, you know, on this day, I mean, let's put a line here. Nothing was happening other than this floor. It looks like right there. So no other indicators were saying, hey, yeah, this is it. This is happening. Um, but but this was saying it, right? And that that was like the moment. That was the moment of aha. So I would say yeah. don't put all your money down on this one, but um, I can't tell you to do anything, honestly. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm Go ahead, you know, Jeff. Uh, so, so I, I just want to, cause before we run out of time, I just want to show you an example, right? If you put in the Ethereum Bitcoin of when the market starts to trend with the trend indicator. Ooh. Wow. So this guy's means they're using Bitcoin to buy Ethereum. And, and now on this symbol, right? If you change it to ETC. Oh, this oh, is another here. pair. Okay. So uh, this is Ethereum well, class. And you want to purchase with Bitcoin? Bitcoin? Well, I just want to show in here yeah. when we get the, a, uh, a bell alert from the trend indicator, how the market, you know, can move to the upper end of the culture band on the ERI. Oh, yeah. Perfect. So this, so this is what we're looking for. We've got the volatility uh, index that said uh, yes. We got the uh, move on the TSI that says yes. Then we got the signal line. And then when we finally got the bell alert, we got the market, the movement from the market. Yeah. So guys, you can take your ruler and go from the bottom to the top. Went up 27% in eight days. And we're looking at the yeah. one day chart. Now, now, you see on there, Susie, how if you look at the volatility index, like, like look at what happened before. The volatility index, you can scale in 25. The TSI, scale in 25. 
okay? Yeah. And then the signal alert is what came in late. So it's all about positioning. And with these tools, and you know, you can position yourself in a way where you can have a great uh, reward because you'll match the expectation. Your, your expectation is you're going to win on the trade. Well, you have to have the tools that show the clues on how you can position yourself to win. Yeah, that's a great example of how to do that. And you got to just start playing with these indicators so that you develop a trust and it's almost like an emotional rapport with them. Because when you're playing with real money, you really get tense. I mean, sometimes you get tense, but it's like once you get more acclimated to understanding the seasons in crypto, if you understand the charts and the indicators and you're feeling the rhythm of the market, it's almost like reading music. Truthfully, Joe, I feel like what you created here is like music to the market. And once you guys get in sync, and you feel confident, because I know I work with a lot of crypto enthusiasts, but I'll be honest with you guys, they're chicken. I have chicken, chicken. My my favorite people in crypto land are scared to swing trade. And it's just because they want to always be winners. So a lot of them are doing mining and other things, but it's just that they need to develop confidence. So I applaud all of you guys that are here today to develop your skills to swing trade so that you can have the five time gains every year that I've had since working with Joe's indicators. And and um, it's it's not hard, but I, I have had to develop a trust and a rapport with these indicators and an understanding and an analysis of my own risk tolerance so that I don't make poor emotional choices. I just follow the numbers. So it's 102. Um, so you guys are awesome. I'm glad you were here. Um, KS did say something, Joe. He said, he said, um, this is about the news articles. This is a policy shift for miners, B-I-T-F. Not clear how other bigger miners are faring into the current, the current deleveraging market environment. Miners starting to bulk sell their BTC will depress Bitcoin price in the near term by how much remains to be seen. He said, on the flip side, the price of entry has been tremendously lowered for major market players waiting on the sidelines to step into BTC. With Deloitte, that's the big, big corporate company, and NYDIG combining their industry recognition, this is very bullish news. Once the likes of Adobe and other major overall market players start officially integrating Bitcoin payment rails into their technologies, they will also start buying into Bitcoin to hold on their corporate balance sheets. Now it's much less expensive to do that back it, than back in November, 2021. So KS, you're a phenomenal writer, very exciting that you're here with us. And I hope everybody really listens to what he just said. So he is saying that the miners are taking profit, selling profit, but now we have the big time player corporations coming in. So it's a different type of investor with the institutional money. And that is going to be huge for overall stability of the digital currency world and that asset. But temporarily, Bitcoin is down, but not for long is what I gather from what KS is saying. So thanks for that analysis. That was amazing. And I just want to just applaud you guys again for being here. And we really hope deep down in our heart of all hearts that you are taking a chance, even if it's $20, I please would just try this so that you can get acclimated to the market, to utilizing your your trading software and 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 actually seeing wins and, and do it with small amounts so that you don't get upset if you win or lose. But, you know, give yourself that time to just test it. Because it, it works. It really does. Joe, do you want to say anything before we go? Uh, uh, that's it. There's a lot of opportunities. Set your alerts. And good luck trading.
All right. You guys have a great day and we look forward to seeing you next Tuesday.